And so. <sighs> I think we're buying it. I like it a lot. And the crappy part is, I didn't even negotiate hard on it. Let's see how it goes. I hope they can hear me. It's pretty loud. So right now we're about to do a follow-up video for the Throttle Dream Build giveaway. Basically in my entry, I said that I sold my BMW specifically for this Dream Build giveaway to pick up this thing, and I made it happen the next day. So let's hope we get chosen. So I'm gonna make a follow-up video right now. Might be a little loud, so we might have to redo this somewhere else, but let's see how it goes. All right, what is going on, Throttle? So in my entry video, I said that I sold my BMW to pick up an FJ. You should have seen me when I did the entry video. I did like, I don't want to say how many takes. It was a lot. <laughs> I said that I specifically was going to sell my car to do the dream, dream build giveaway and go all out. And then this is me making my promise. So hopefully I get chosen. And if not, I'm going to have a very expensive build to do. But thank you guys again for all this opportunity. Oh, and by the way, if you're a Texan, I'm at the That's best gas station in the world, Bucky's. Anyways, Anyways guys, I hope I hear from you guys soon. Later. That's not too bad, right? So, Cookie, who's behind the camera, what, what do you have to say about the owners we bought this from? They were probably like the sweetest and kindest, most friendliest person. Right? I think I have ever seen you dealt with. Let's just say I've dealt with a lot of buyers, and this is by far at the top of my buying experience. I've had a lot of other people I became friends with during buying process. The last guy that I was gonna buy an FJ from, he actually told me not to buy it because he was really honest with me and everything I wanted. But these people, we connected on not just a car level, but just like a lifestyle and everything level. If you guys are watching this, you guys are awesome. Let's keep meeting up and everything when we come down to Houston area. I don't know, I'm just talking in circles right now. Cookie's very hungry, I'm hungry. The dogs are probably hungry. So we're gonna finish up, get some gas and get back on the road back to Dallas because that was a long drive for a car. So, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Woo! <laughs> All right. This is the first fill up I have in the FJ. Hey. Now you meet me. Hi, Charles. Wait, did you fill up? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna compare. That's how much you've used. <laughs> All right, we got Cookie's car. That took $9.67. My tank was full. Oh, that's not bad. $21. So basically it's double. So I'll say I'm getting like 15. That sounds all right. My X5 is around the same thing, so I shouldn't be surprised. But this gas tank might be smaller, might be bigger. I have no clue. But overall, I am enjoying this truck a lot. <laughs> and every stop we go, if we see a Bucky's, we stop at it no matter what. And for the ones that have never been in here, look at all the stuff they got. This is like the Asian mats, but Bucky's were here. Oh, the Bucky's merch. We should get this Parkan. You don't want one color. Oh, actually, both of these. This is like a dad hat. This would be perfect for Khan. But Khan also likes a uh, beanie, so. Hmm. All right, when, yeah, when he visits. Actually, he'll probably rock this one too. We should just deck him out in a Bucky's outfit. Okay. For those who've never been to Bucky, they have all their own stuff. It's probably just relabeled from some private label, but they got their own popcorn. They got their own nuts. They got their own candy. They got their own chips. They got bandanas. There you go. Bluetooth setting. Bluetooth on and off connection. Hands. It looks like we're connected. Woo! Alright, we are in the matrix. I'm just kidding, that was a horrible reference. Let's see if I can. Oh. My first video I see after getting this car. Five things I hate about my Toyota FJ Cruiser. What's going on guys? I'm So, it is the next day, and I have to say, 
that this is the first time in a long time that I've been this excited about a vehicle. There's so much plans that I want to do with this thing, not about just the build in general, but what I'm actually going to do with this and the journey it's going to take me with. But enough talking. Let me show you the car in daytime or the truck. And I'm um, going to take you to the back and let's uh, unload everything that's in the truck and let's talk more about it. So let's go. All right, so here's the truck in all its glories in the back of the house. So what I'm gonna do right now is unload everything that this guy gave me and just go over the truck. First things first, let's open up these suicide doors. And the first thing we have is this giant box. So in this giant box, it should be a box of brakes. It should be the full set of the front and rear rotors and brake pads. Four. Four. All right, this is heavy. Ah, it's a box within a box. And another box within a box. We have the brake pads. And of course, got some stickers. Put this to the side. So then these should be rotors. Sweet. So we got those. That's cool. Next, we have the original tire cover for the rear. Not sure if this actually will fit, nor would I use it. Just go cool to have OEM stuff. So we'll put that one right there. All right, you probably noticed these red boxes. So the previous owner said that all he does is Toyota. And I believe him. So he gave me four genuine oil filters. He also gave me a new set of plugs so plugs as in spark plugs so we got all six there and we got oil changes for the year well depending how much i drive he also gave me the original lug nuts so good to have especially the key <laughs> all right move to the back it's a little dirty originally he said the car came with some rock colors but his kids had issues coming in and out of the truck so he went with the oem plastic ones so he was nice enough to still include them oh shit these are heavy i wonder how much these weigh i was thinking about putting these on the truck but how much it weighs i guess that's the price you pay to go over landing All right, so next we should have some axles. So the story behind these is that one of the boots is torn and he caught it before it got any worse and he just ended up replacing both axles. So we'll inspect it in a second. Aha, uh -huh. there you go. One's ripped there and this one's ripped here. So what we can do is basically rebuild it, put some new boots on, and we'll have a second set. This should be the rubber mats for when all the seats are down. This would be handy for my dog so he doesn't slip around when he's back here. Good man with that too. So next we have the crossbars. So these crossbars is for the roof rack at the top so you can add bicycles kayaks whatever and mount it properly we'll see if we utilize this because i do plan on getting a different uh roof rack on top that's more slim because this one's pretty thick pretty high up and i want this car to be as slim as possible granted this thing is huge uh so slim as possible is probably not the right word to use hopefully you know what i mean The guy I bought this from, he has a family of four, so I can only assume that he got this because he wanted to fit all their kids. That being said, it's an awesome, awesome addition. Unfortunately, I'm gonna take it out because I don't need it. I need this to be as open as possible because I am planning doing a car camping build 
and I need a way to basically store everything I can in here properly and efficiently. So that means that needs to go and most likely these back seats may go too. One may stay or two may stay, one may go. I'm not sure. There's a lot of options we can do with this build, a lot. So if you guys have any, any recommendations at all on the route we should go, let me know. The, this thing needs to be a car camping, mountain biking, overlanding dream, but still be functional, efficient, and not too over the top. And again, I'm not sure if I can say all of that in the same sentence, and that's even possible. Especially fuel economy, because the fuel economy in this sucks. But yeah, let's uh... This is everything all spread out. We got the rock crawler side steps. We got the old axles that we can probably repair. The rear mat, we got the OE tire cover. Also has some crossbars for OEM. Toyota, genuine oil filters, along with plugs. So we also have some power stop pads along with some slotted drilled rotors. But that's basically it. So let's start with the walk around and let's start with the most obvious things. And that is the height. So this is lifted and I believe this is lifted one and a half inch spacer. We do have some beefier control arms and it does have Bilstein's 5100s on them. This was a very comfortable ride back from Houston. So I have no complaints there. I would like to do a full refresh on this to make this as reliable as possible. But for how it sits right now, this thing drives great. Gas mileage sucks, but drives great. As far as tires, it has some Toyo Open Countries on it. These are 285, 75, 16s on some TRD wheels. And it also has some spacers on it. Basically, you can see a slight poke out. Now, is this setup the best setup? I'm not sure. I'm not a wheel and tire suspension guy. So if you guys know anything about all this overlanding and truck stuff, I am a complete noob. So feel free to educate me. Anyways, this brings us now to the front of the vehicle. Front, we have the stock bumper. You see that all around the plastics, there's some sun fading. That's okay. We can freshen that up or put new fenders on. Who knows? This one, there's a dent here, it is plastic, so we can just heat this up, pop it out if need be, or just replace a whole bumper. There is aftermarket fog lights up in front here. I'm not sure how to turn them on. I tried clicking on the fog lights, it didn't turn on. I believe he told me that he got it disconnected. Lighting wise, he has some HID high beams on it. Super, super, super bright. Um, I was definitely blinding my girlfriend driving back. <laughs> I felt so bad for her, cause she's driving a little cyan I am, which is the new Toyota Corolla hatch. So um, yeah, I felt bad blinding her the entire way home. Sorry, babe. All right, so also to the front, we have a little wind deflector, bug deflector, wherever you call these things. He has some bonnet, I don't know the terminology. Again, I'm not an overlander guy, so sorry if I'm butchering all these terms, but I'll call it a bonnet light. <laughs> so he has two bonnet lights, LEDs. And he also has an overhead light bar. These, bright as hell. We went on some back roads, lit it up. The whole area was lit up. So I'm excited to use that while camping and to piss some people off if they ever cut me off. I'm just kidding. <sighs> on this side, we got a safari snorkel. Now, do I need a snorkel? No. Am I gonna take it off? Probably not. You know why? It's cut into the fender. So I'll probably leave it on. There is a cool snorkel that I like, and I forgot the brand, but it goes up like this, and instead of it this poking out, this concaves this way and goes that way, and it makes it more flush. I'm gonna look into that possibly, but it doesn't look too half bad. But the cool thing is, let me, let me pop the hood. The cool thing about the snorkel, when you hit VTEC, I, I mean, I'm just kidding. It has a TRD intake. So this TRD intake is actually connected to the snorkel. So that means that you have the best air going to this the whole time. I'm assuming, I'm assuming the best air is up here and not down here where traditional intakes are in. Where you're getting exhaust fumes from other cars and vehicles and everything, all that jazz. I could be completely wrong again. It just makes sense if you get the air from the openness up to here, down to here, and into here. Now, how efficient is all the system? I don't know. Probably hurts on gas mileage. 
maybe. But obviously a snorkel is so you can go off-roading in the water, in the mud, and you don't suck up anything into your motor. So, if, if, if removing the snorkel gets you better gas mileage and a better system is available, I would probably do that because the gas mileage, again, on this thing sucks. But you got to pay to play, right? So, but now since we're underneath the hood, let's look at it. So we have a red top Optima. Great. We got some wiring over here for all the lights. Looks like it's been done well. Nothing surprises me or pops in the open for me to be worried about. Again, TRD intake, pretty clean. It's missing some nuts and bolts and stuff holding down the cover and everything. But overall, motor-wise, doesn't look too bad. I would like a new manifold and everything, but honestly, if that's not cracked and works perfectly fine, leave it, maybe get a powder coat it to make it look nicer. Powder coat the valve cover. If I'm able to make this look a little nicer and possibly, possibly, if it's in the budget, possibly a supercharger. I've always wanted a supercharger. All I had is turbocharged cars. I think it'd be pretty nice to have that supercharged wine. Now it might be annoying after a while, but I thought the same thing with a turbocharged car, but no. I did not get sick of that spool. Let's close this up. So now we move to the side and looking at the body lines and everything looks pretty good. So this car has around 200,000 miles. So I'm pretty impressed how well it's been kept for 200,000 miles. The only issues I really see is the sun fading on these plastics. But other than that, the body itself looks great. So I definitely need to get this thing fully detailed paint corrected and all that jazz but for what it is it's pretty good but if we move to the top we do have some buffing marks from here at first I thought it was paint marks but uh, definitely marks from the buffer and it wasn't taped off so up here we got some rust going on this uh, light bar over here no big deal we can always take this down sand it all down and uh, repaint it same with this but i don't plan on keeping this i don't really care about repainting this but i may restore it so i can sell it unless some of you guys are interested and i may just give some of these away maybe as a 1000 subscriber or something like that at the top you can see some roof damage and it looks like some hail possibly someone stepping on the roof because there's a big dent there or it could be from that huge hailstorm we had where we had literally like fist size uh hail balls so to the back we got more sun fading here no big deal again all the black trim and everything is all faded out so it needs to be refreshed repainted something stressed up somehow to get it back looking good we could always add fenders on this i do kind of like the clean look of this but who knows depending how the build goes we'll transform it the way it needs to be down here tow package i think they all have a tow package but got some surface rust here and the thing that everyone probably is learning is how does underneath look because fjs are known to rust just like the tacoma and the tundra which had a recall they had some weakening points in the chassis where it was rusting and toyota decided to recognize that but they have not recognized it for the fj yet so if you're an fj owner or not sure how you can do this without being an FJ owner. But if you're an FJ owner, make sure to go to, you know what, I'll put the link down below in the description. But basically you go to this link and you complain. And basically if you get enough people to petition and everything for it, I believe the safety regulations are forced to make Toyota fix the problem because enough people have basically you know, done so. All right, let's look underneath. As you can see, definitely some surface rust. Got yeah, there, 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 everywhere. But from all the FJs I've been looking at, I've seen some clean ones, but they want some outrageous money. I've seen some really, really bad ones. And when I say I've seen some bad ones, I mean this whole entire undercarriage is just rust. The bolts are rust, joints are rust, everything is rust. Anything that you can see under here is just rust. This one looks decent, the bolts, Looks like I can still crack them off just fine. Just put some WD-40 in everything. It really doesn't look too bad. It's definitely, I say, salvageable. 
And the good thing about having a truck that's kind of lifted is that you can easily inspect it when you buy it. Now, when I went to go inspect this car, I was surprised to see no um, oil leaks or anything. So hopefully that's actually how the car is. It's honestly probably the first used car I've ever bought where I didn't find anything leaking, especially at 200,000 miles. So it either means one, this thing has actually been maintained properly or two, all the stuff got wiped off before I bought the car. But the previous owner really didn't seem like he was BSing me at all. And he was a really cool dude. And I feel like I'm pretty good judgment of people. So I'll take his word on it because so far everything he said about the truck has been true. And I'm very appreciative of it. And also he gave me beer. I don't think I've ever had any car deal where the owner gave me beer to bring home, which I'll, maybe I'll show you later, but I'm excited to try it. So. Thank you again if you're watching. So we're on this side now. We got this little thing broken, so it got snagged onto something. And this is why people put those rock crawlers or whatever steel side steps, so this stuff doesn't happen. Now, no big deal though. You can always stitch this back up and plastic weld it back together. The only body damage I see is a dent in this hood. So now, this brings us to the inside and I keep enjoying opening up these suicide doors so what we got here we got another trail teams edition tag there floor mats there and the seats down here like I said earlier those back seats are aftermarket they are going to go so if you're interested in them let me know we'll work something out overall condition is great headliner I think for a 200,000 mile truck is amazing. There's obviously some marks here and there, and most likely I'm probably gonna get this more dirty. I'll probably get that all cleaned up to make it look as new, and I'm gonna try to decide what I'm gonna do with this back area. So, again, if you guys are into the camping, overlanding, car camping, all that jazz, let me know if you wanna kinda collaborate and think of something what we can do back here, because I want this to, again, be the ultimate mountain biking car camping overlanding machine on a budget <laughs> all right now to the front so we got all the extra amenities here we got fog lights this is the voltage for the back to turn on that the zombie lights are for the lights up there rear diff log a track subwoofer on and off back here because the subwoofer is this doohickey back here now am i going to keep it probably for now but if it gets in the way of this build because I need all the space as I need, it's probably gonna go. But for now, I'll leave it. No point of taking things out until I have to, so. Let's close this up. Actually, we'll close that side up. This old school Pioneer head unit. Now this thing, I wanted one when I was back in high school and now I have one now. So it just took a while. <laughs> but anyways, this one has navigation and a backup camera all hooked up so I'm happy with that because I do not want a truck without a backup camera so I'm glad this has a backup camera now I may reposition where the backup camera is because right now it's located where is it right here so it's located right here I'm not sure if I like this spot especially since it's offset so I may move this and I've seen other builds to it they take this and since this is a metal backing or well, I'll get a new bracket and they put it under here. Since this is metal, you put a strong magnet and you put it right under here. Whenever you're ready to tow something, you just move it around. So put it here, 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 doesn't matter where. As long as it's on a surface where the magnets can grab, that's where it's gonna be. Oh, and you JDM folks out there, there we go. All right, so what we got here is, let's look around and here. Let's we'll start with this. We got a Sirius satellite radio going here. Now, am I gonna keep the subscription no the previous owner is going to transfer it to his next truck i'll probably leave it in here because it's ready mounted i may pop it off hide the wires something but there's a really no point in me getting rid of it out of the truck um, until i need to if i need the space for something which i doubt over on this side we got the led light bar so that will power this giant doohickey up here other than that the interior is pretty basic we got the um aluminum i guess shift knobs and everything going here that's basically it that's my fj i guess i'll bring you to the back since we're already doing all this so we open this up so when you open the door 
open it all the way pull and locks open the tailgate so we need to remove this so we have all the room back here but nothing much going on back here um, right now you can only open up the hatch manually with the key since i have a dog and these side windows don't open up or don't roll down i may do the mod where you get a motor for the back and i can use it to control it to open up and close so my dog can actually stick his head out through the back when need be when you're done with this just boop. all right guys well this completes the walk around i hope you guys enjoyed this new truck and that you're not sad that i got rid of my x5 but i think this fits my lifestyle a little bit better hopefully we win this dream build giveaway because that would be smoking awesome and it speeds up this whole process so we can get and hitting all 50 states and make great content for you guys but if not it's going to be a slow process and uh, i'm going to be stuck in dallas for a while building this thing up but nonetheless i hope you guys enjoy this video i will come up with more videos of the harley and anything else in my life when the time comes but again thank you guys all for another random random day in life as a realtor later guys